2 Kings, verse 13. Chapter 15, verse 13. Yeah, chapter 15, verse 13. Shalom, the son of Jebus, began to reign in the ninth, thirtieth year of Uzziah, king of Judah, that's south. And he reigned a full month in Samaria. Like I said last night, that's, that's a long time, 30 days. It's a Jewish Bible month. And Manham, the son of Gadai, went up from Tarsus and came to Samaria, capital of Israel, and smote Shalom, the son of Japheth in Samaria, and slew him, and reigned in his stead. And it's just reign and death, reign and death. No matter who and what your stance in life is, the wages of sin is death. Sometimes you make a great mark on this earth, and sometimes you don't. The rest of the acts of Shalom and his conspiracy, which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. Now, I believe it was Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And if the Bible is never going to pass away, forever eternity it is written of this man Shalom, conspiracy. Careful what we do. Then Menhem smote Tibshah and all that were therein and the coast thereof from Tizra because they opened not to him. Aww. Therefore he smote it and all the women therein that were with child he ripped up. That's the first time Rip shows up. Just because they wouldn't open the gates, open up the city to him, let him in. He's killing people and women that are pregnant. He's what, ripping them open with the sword. And you got something today. It's just recently. Kind of funny. Uh, not funny, but. They got this thing called ripping. Rip. And it's bodybuilding. The first time rip shows up in the Bible. It's, it's women being killed. Their children inside. This is a cruel treatment. For pregnant women. In the ninth and thirty year of Azariah, king of Judah, north, I mean south, began Mahem the son of Gadai to reign over Israel, south. He reigned ten years in Samaria. I mean, what are you going to do? God gives grace to some and God's long-suffering to others. This man has ripped up children, but he gets a long reign where a man gets only a month. A man had a reign only for a month. He's killed by a man. He goes in and destroys people. And he gets a vast longer reign. That's why people hate God. Why did God let the babies die? Why did God let this city get destroyed? Why did God? It's not God. It's the wages of sin. It's the long suffering of God for a man to get right with God. Over and over. And everything will, will be weighed out at the judgments. And once Revelation 20 is done, and we go into Revelation 21, then we got a brand new beginning. All things are new. And he that did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. As up north they all do. Uh, I mean Israel, I don't mean. He departed not from all the days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin. There's that lasting religion, as there are lasting religions today, and God will finally judge them. And Pul, the king of Assyria, came against the land, Israel, and Menhem gave Pul thousand talents of silver, that, he, that his hand might be with him to confirm the kingdom in his hand. It's bribery. Here's the money, please. It's a payoff. It's been happening in B.C. It's happening all the time. These payoffs of nations. And Menhem, Mayhem, exacted. That's the first time that word shows up. And the only other place it shows up is in chapter 23, 35. Two places. Here in 23, 35. Money of Israel. North. Even all the mighty men of wealth of each man 50 shekels of silver to give them to the king of Syria. Oh, 
The, the Democrats want to tax the rich to give to the... Ladies and gentlemen, it's in the Bible. There it is. Taxing the rich. There it is. BC 758, if that date's correct, and I'm not going to judge that date. He's taxing the wealthy to give to the king of Syria protection money. You ever hear of protection money? You know, if you, if you give us money, we'll protect you. I mean, this stuff happened in New York City, Chicago, happened during the Prohibition. It happens amongst the church. Hey, if you give us money, oh, God didn't see that, that, that murder. That's amore. No, that's an eel. So the king of Assyria turned back and stayed not there in the land. So the money bought him off. He had to tax the residents. And the rest of the acts of Menhem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And Menhem slept with his fathers, and Pekah, I mean, these names just get bad. Pekariah, his son, reigned in his stead. In the 50th year of Azariah, the king of Judah, north, south, I'm getting this all messed up. Pekaniah, the son of Menhem, began to reign over Israel, north, in Samaria, the capital, reigned two years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nehemiah. Listen, this is the standard religion of Israel, up north, who made Israel the sin. But Pekah, the son of Remaniah, a captain of his, military leader, conspired against him and smote him in Samaria. Look, look how many times is this happening? I wouldn't want to be a king. I mean, especially in, in Europe in the time. I mean, they had somebody who would taste their food and drink. Uh, Joseph had the baker in Genesis. And he would say, I take the cup and take the grapes or right in front of Pharaoh and make the new wine. The only way you could have poisoned, you could have poisoned the cup or you could have poisoned the grapes. And I would probably assume that that baker would take a sip out of it. Now we think, oh, you know, somebody tasted, somebody drank from that. That was the life of the king. People are always trying to kill him. And here it is in the, the Holy Bible. Look how much death, conspiracy. Look how much death. People killing each other. This is the Holy Bible. And from Genesis 3 to Revelation 20, when, the, when all is gone, if heaven and earth, death, death, death. God's told Adam, said, the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. You guys, if, let's say Genesis 3 never happened, they never took that fruit, they never ate that fruit. You realize we would be reading about people right now that would never die, that no conspiracy, we would live all happily ever after. I don't know where we fit everybody, but God had a plan. In the palace of the king's house, so he's in the royalty house, he's getting killed. With Argob and Arya. And with him, 50 men of the Gileites. And he killed him and reigned in his room. And God names them. The rest of the acts of Pe Pecaniah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the 2 and 50th year of Azariah, king of Judah, and you can lay these out to see that, and you can find them online to lay out the king's timeline, general. Pekah, the son of Remaliah, began to reign over Israel, north, in Samaria, and reigned 20 years. Are you ready? And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel the sin. This is the problem. How many generations are growing up in the, in the church and her sister churches and filed up, messed up, worldly, godly, or godless churches? They just do the same thing over every year after year after year after year. And it's still angers God. And God allows them to keep doing, and he'll judge them. In the days of Pekah, the king of Israel came, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, 
and took Ijon to the city, Elbeth, Mecca, which is a city, and Jonath, a city, and Kedish, a Caesar, Hazor, a city, Gilead, and Galilee. Whoa, that's the area of Jesus Christ comes from. And all the land of Nathalai. And I believe there's a scripture spoken about out of Nathalai came the word and the light. So we are in the area right now of Peter, James, John, Andrew, Jesus. Here it is, north. And carry them away, carry them captive to Assyria. So God's had it with that Jeroboam religion. And Hosea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pekah. And the son of Remaliah and smote him. Here's another, here's another conspiracy. And slew him and reigned in his dead in the 20th year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. And the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, began Jotham, the son of Uzziah, the king of Judah, to reign. Now remember, we read last night. Uzziah hasn't died. He has become leprous. His son is put into his room. So there's a cold rain here. And that happens a few times. Five and twenty years old when he began to reign. And he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his, mother, and his mother's name was Jerasha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. How be it? Now this is the this is the Jeroboam and his made Israel sin. Here is the south. The high places were not removed. Now, let's come back over here real again, what we said yesterday. Chapter 15, verse 4. Save that the high places were not removed. We come over here, how be it? And I spoke to him about that. You save something. Something's coming on the chopping block and you save it. Well, here we now, how be it? If the high places were not removed and the people sacrificed and burned incense. Still, still. Well, come back over here. They burned incense. Still, They're still doing it. The Holy Spirit records. Though what is right has been told to you by the law, it's almost like God is speaking to the nation, maybe sending prophets that we don't even hear about. Oh, well, you can have your religion. You mean, maybe there's a fact there's people going knocking on these people's doors saying, this is what the law says. You're doing wrong. People preaching on the street. We know Jeremiah preaches on the street. Hey, listen, you must return back to the law. You must come to Jerusalem. You must, before this temple, the Lord God Almighty, anything else is just religion. It ain't good. We still worship. We still still do our ways. In the high places, he built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. So here's another gate, another portion of the city. Now the rest of the acts of Jonathan and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? In those days the Lord began to send against Judah, Sal, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaniah. God's getting angry. He's getting angry at the sons of, uh, at the sins of Nebat. I mean, uh, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. He's getting tired of these high places. And Jonathan slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And as the higher, his son reigned in his stead. So to get to the point, you can say, well, you know what? We got a religion. It pleases us. It pleases God. It does not. And we've seen year after year after year after year. Here is the sins of Jeroboam. Here is the sins of the high places. Everything's hunky-dory. God has not destroyed us yet. But does he? Yes, he does. Will he? Yes, he will. Israel North is going to go completely in captivity. They have not gone back yet. Judah is going to go into captivity. They're going to come back under Ezra and Nehemiah. God is going to destroy those things. The sins of the high places will come back. But when God gets that ultimate victory, 
it won't come back. It'll be all we pray. 